Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael Septerman and today in Blender we're going to be taking a look at volumetrics. So that has to do with creating things like fog here in Blender. So instead of going with the default Blender file, I actually have a test file already set up here and it's just a really simple setup. It's a light going through a little gap between a cube uh, and you can see like a sphere on a plane down here. So let's just go into the rendered view here and as you can see like the scene is okay like it's pretty cool i think for somewhat of a cinematic shot or a concept art shot it's pretty cool but the problem is is that the environment is a little bit too crisp and it's a little too sharp there, there's it's not as realistic as it could be if we added in a little bit of fog so today i'm going to be showing you how to add that in and how to texture a fog so you can make your renders look a bit nicer so let's just get started immediately. Let's add in a cube and let's scale that cube up all the way until it covers most of our scene. Scale it on the x-axis, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And let's go back into render view. And now clearly you can't see anything even from the camera. So let's click our cube and let's call it fog and let's add in a new material and call it volumetric fog. And now here, let's get rid of the principal PSDF. Let's delete that with X. Press Shift A and search for a volume scatter node, uh, as you can see here. And let's just connect the volume to the volume of the material output. Now, nothing will change right now, but as you can see in a second here, let's reduce the density to something really low. And usually I like to start it off with something like 0 0.07. And as you can see, that's added in a little bit of fog to our scene. So as you can see, there's a little bit of haze going around the light and kind of like some light scattering going on. And I think this is a little too dense for our scene right now. So let's change this to something really low, like 0 0.01. And let's see if that's good enough for us. I think it needs to go higher. So let's try 0 0.03 and maybe a little bit higher because it's not exactly what I want. Something like that. So as you can see, the image on screen now is a lot less crisp than what it used to be and now that there's actually some realistic fog going on in the background uh, another option that you can change is something known as anisotropy and anisotropy is basically how much the light scatters based on another object in this case the volume scatter node so as, as you can see if we turn it up the light will kind of change uh, directions and changes the way it scatters so we can just adjust that in the way that we need think something like that is good and i'm actually going to reduce this uh density a little bit more so yeah as you can see you can also change the color of the fog although this is something that i don't necessarily mess with although it could come uh, you could come up with some pretty cool um, illustrations and some pretty cool concepts here although for me i i just like to keep it at white in order to keep the same scene going on now obviously this is still a very basic scene but you could use this technique in other scenes that are a lot more complex with a lot more colors to achieve more interesting effects so now the problem is sometimes when you're working on a scene this big you try and click your items uh your meshes in the scene sorry and you can't really like click them because the fog is in the way so there are a few ways that you could solve this so first let's click on the fog and the way that i like to do it is by going here to viewport display and we can write display as and change from texture to bounds this way the uh the fog will still be there but you can only select it if you're clicking on the bounds. This way you can click all the meshes inside your scene much easier. And if you want to click on the fog, you could always click on its bounding box. Um, another way that you could actually make it so you can click on the things inside is by clicking this. Uh, and in visibility, you just uncheck selectable. So now the fog is not a mesh that you can select and it's just going to be static there and you can edit your scene as you go along so these two techniques actually allow you to be able to click inside your scene and ensure that you know you can kind of still edit your scene without disturbing the fog in any way so now here i have a scene that is in low poly in kind of this forest scene that i made for a portfolio piece a while back and I think it's the perfect scene to add some volumetrics to it. It's kind of dark, but there's a lot of sources. Of, there's like one or two sources of light uh, that can penetrate through the fog. So let's add some fog in order to see how it adds to the scene. So again, let's press shift A. Let's add a cube. Let's press S to scale it out. And oops, I will turn on screencast keys for you guys. Yeah. 
and let's press S Y. And now we have a similar setup as to the one we had earlier. So let's add in a new material and call it fog. And let's press shift A and press S to search for a volume scatter node. Connect it to the volume. And let's lower the density to something like zero first. Let's go back into our camera view and let's start again with that 0.07. And as you can see, the light from the pedestal is actually kind of penetrating through the whole scene. Um, but let's 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 lower this. I think the density of 0.07 is actually a little too high. So let's make something like 0.04, still a bit too high, maybe 0.02. And there, that's a little bit better. Uh, and actually, what we should do is let's add in another uh, light source. Uh, and we can do RX 90 degrees and move it on the Y axis. Something like that. And let's increase the strength a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so uh, as you can see, like the scene's a little better now. You can kind of see the lights. Actually, I don't know how I feel about this light. I might just delete it. So as you can see, we have all these uh features in the fog and it's kind of like a little bit more mysterious a little bit more hazy and something that really adds to the overall scene you could add this with a mist pass which is something we do in post-processing or you could post-process it in photoshop as well to kind of fine-tune the fog details to be more of what you like but this is just a general idea of what you could do with volumetrics in blender 3.4 so uh, to recap, I think that fog is great to be added to scenes such as these where there's one or two focal points of light in a dark atmosphere. So really shows the light that shines through. Let's click the fog again. Actually, I'm going to up the anisotropy, something like that. Yeah, so I think that this is a great place to end the video for today. I really hope that you guys learned something from this tutorial on how to add volumetrics into Blender 3.4. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below because it really helps my channel grow and as well as hit the like button uh, just to show me that you, you know, this video really helped you out. So yeah, thank you guys and I will see you next week. Goodbye.